Good morning, Northtown. I'm Josiah Mendoza. And I'm Kevin Nguyen. Today is Wednesday, October 25th. On today's show, we'll bring you a mini week announcement update, keep you inside scoop and all things Northtown sports, uh, keep you up to date on internet trends, and much, much more. All on NTV News. Today in World News, we will discuss a Spanish tourist's death in Brazil and Thailand celebrating the long, world's longest serving monarch. 67 year old Maria Esperanza Ruiz Jimenez was shot dead in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, by a police officer after failing to stop at a roadblock. She was accompanied by two Spaniards and an Italian guide. Crime and suspicion are high after Brazilian military was brought to the Regina Favela to discourage violence between drug gangs at war. Daily gunfire still takes place and her death was blamed on the drug gangs. She's a third tourist to be shot dead in Regina Favela in less than a year. Thailand artisans have constructed a beautiful three-tiered golden royal crematorium for the cremation of their late king. The cremation will take place during a five-year ceremony to put an end to the nation's mourning. Some in Thailand consider their longest ruling monarch to be nothing short of a demigod. The structure took place for 10 months to end it took 10 months to complete and is now holding dress rehearsals for the event. In today's internet highlight, we look at a new social media app that's taking the country by storm. TVH is a social media app that has you answer poll questions about what you like about your classmates. It sends the, your answer to the person who you chose anonymously. It also allows you to submit poll questions. TVH is the only, only allows positive questions, poll questions to be submitted. So no one will be getting roasted on this app. The creators of TBH uh, Facebook say that they believe social media should make us feel better, not worse. The app became available on the App Store, the Apple App Store that is, in Missouri last week and is quickly gaining popularity. Though it is only available on Apple devices as of now, the creators have plans to release it on Android devices in the near future. You can download TBH on Apple devices today. Fall sports are coming to an end, so let's catch up with teams and see how they're doing in conference and districts. Here's your sports update. Congrats to Zach Murdays for finishing 15th at the district cross-country meet, qualifying to compete in sectional meeting on Saturday. Varsity football ended their season with a 26-27 loss to Truman on Friday. The school and team showed great spirits despite the disappointing loss. Congrats to our conference champion boys soccer team with a 1-0 win against Oak Park. They will play their district tournament at Liberty North. Sign up for the Spirit Bus is located on the first floor and the price is $5 for... Please congratulate the following swimmers for their amazing performance this weekend at conference. They have the last uh, chance meet Tuesday, October 31st. Uh, after they are ready to hit the stay meet next week. This is the first time Northtown will have a relay at State in a decade. Jack Duffy, second in 200 free and fourth in 100. Fly of Evan Bowman, conference champion in 50 freestyle and second place in 100 freestyle. Daryl Colley, seventh in free, 50, 50 freestyle and sixth in 100 freestyle. Chris Marsh, sixth in 50 freestyle and seventh in 100 freestyle. Shu Nguyen, fifth in 200 freestyle and second in 500 freestyle. The second hundred, the 200 free relay and 400 free relay of E. Bowman, D. Colley, C. Marsh, and J. Duffy are ready to compete at state next week. Wish them luck. <clears throat> there are quite a few clubs and activities meetings this week, so let's give you everything to know and what's buzzing around Northtown. Congratulations to the following speech and debate students for placing at the Rockhurst Open Tournament. Rebecca Winkle, 6th place humorous interpretation. Alyssa Heyer, 3rd place storytelling. Jimmy Maloney, 1st place radio speaking. Sarah Ragsdale, 5th place radio speaking. Asada Starks, 1st place on oratory. Selma Lillick on Anna Tassa Starks, 6th place duo. Jostens will be returning for the final time today for seniors to place their cap and gown orders during all three lunch shifts. A $60 deposit will be required at the time. The meeting packets are still available in the Student Services Center. The deadline to register for the December ACT is November 3rd. Please see Ms. Ethnosa for help. Any students interested in directing a one-act for December mobs, please send Mr. Jackson the title of the show you want to direct, cast needs, and length of the show. It must be no longer than 20 minutes. 
There will be a DECA parent-only meeting next Wednesday evening at 6.30 in Norclay 826. Contact Mr. James for information. There will also be a DECA chapter meeting on Friday during advisory. Teach will have a meeting during advisory this Friday in Maine 221. PID orchestra rehearsals will be today and Friday uh, from right after school until 5. Orchestra will have its fall concert this Thursday at 7 p.m. All musicians should arrive at 6.15 to take a group yearbook photo in their concert black attire. Nortown is running a canned good drive through October 31st. The class with the most canned prizes will win. Also on October 30th, from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m., we will have a trunk or treat. The cost, is two, the cost of entry is two canned goods per child to trunk or treat. All of Nortown's clubs and activities are encouraged to make a trunk. Sign up ends on Friday. There's been a concern regarding students' rights to stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance, especially in the wake of the kneeling protest in the NFL. Reporters Manuel Rodriguez and Brian Johnson look further. At 723 at North Kansas City High School, students are settling into their seats and getting ready for class, but not before they listen to this. Good morning, Northtown. It's time to honor the request of our state legislature and recite the 1954 version of the Pledge of Allegiance. So if you'll please rise, face the flag on display in your room, place your right hand over your heart, and say with me, I pledge allegiance to the flag. That is Steve Hatfield, a colorful former English teacher at the school. It's been years since Northtown students have seen his face, but his voice is unforgettable. Every student at North Kansas City is asked to stand for the pledge by Hatfield every morning, five days a week. This is because of a state law passed in the Missouri House of Representatives, House Bill 1750, sponsored by Republican Representative Shane Roden, which stipulates that schools receiving public funds must recite the pledge every school day. The bill passed last year on August 8th, which is not unusual as almost every other state in the Union has similar legislation on the pledge in public schools. But some students don't stand for the pledge. One NKC student, Marion Johnson, who is the secretary for the Young Democrats Club, thinks it's a decision of each student. I don't think that the pledge is a necessity in like public schools because I think it's really discriminatory to have to like include under God, especially in a public school and in America with no like re like specific national religion. And I personally like that doesn't align with my beliefs, so like I just won't say it. Not everyone agrees. Another student on our broadcast team, Josiah Mendoza, thinks students should stand. As an American, I think we should honor the military with respect. My brother is in the military also, so that definitely gave me more of an obligation to stand. One common thing they shared, however, was that neither student knew of the legislation protecting students' right to stand or not. In the 1943 Supreme Court case, West Virginia State Board of Education versus Barnett, a Virginia school wanted to expel a student for not standing for the pledge, citing it as an act of insubordination. The Supreme Court ruled in favor of Barnett, the student, and created three protections for students regarding the pledge. Schools cannot require students to recite the pledge or stand for the pledge. Students cannot be required to leave the room while other students recite the pledge, obtain parental approval to be exempt from reciting the pledge, or have to explain or justify themselves. And, teachers may not influence students to participate. In general, students have the ultimate right to choose when it comes to the pledge, but they are woefully unaware of this power. By consequence, schools can still get away with infringing on these rights, unbeknownst to students. Take this poster, for example, hanging in room 318 in the school, which clearly depicts patriotic symbolism as a means to influence students, something explicitly restricted by the Supreme Court ruling. After hearing these stories, we wanted to look to some teachers for their opinions regarding the issue. This is Mr. Joaquin Cooney, a Spanish language teacher here at Northtown. We, we shouldn't measure patriotism by saying pledge and or telling the kids to stand up. I think everyone has the right to do what he or she determines to be the right thing. Uh, I mean, by saying the pledge, uh, it doesn't mean I respect or do respect my country more than the other person. In contrast, here's Pat O'Keefe, a psychology and history teacher who used to encourage students to stand in the morning. I feel like everyone has the right to say the words, uh, to not say the words, to stay seated, um, because honestly what it boils down to are a lot, of, a lot of great people did a lot of hard things for us to have freedoms, and that's some of them. We just need to respect each other's beliefs, and um, once again, it's uh, what makes our country different than a lot of others is that we can respect people's opinions and leave, live cohesively and not view them as any different because they choose to sit, stand, believe one thing, one say one thing, that they're a good person, that's really what matters. The division caused in the classroom is closely mirrored by that of the kneeling protest in the NFL. Students cite many different reasons for not standing. 
One student who asks that their name not be shared said that they think it's just laziness, but other students cite the Under God Clause as excluding non-religious students, or the Liberty and Justice for All Clause as being insensitive to the hardships faced by many minority groups across America to this day. North Kansas City High School is the most diverse school in the state of Missouri, and so brings a melting pot of ideals and viewpoints. But one thing that we can all agree, standing or not, is that we are all better off knowing our rights. This has been Bryce Johnson and Amanda Rodriguez reporting for NTV News. That's all we have for you today, Northtown. To stay informed all week long, follow us on Twitter at Northtown News. For photos and announcements, check out our Facebook page, NKC Journalism. And for information about athletics and activities, maps and games, and electronic student ID, download the North Kansas City High School app. Thanks for watching, Northtown. Keep it classy. And as always, it's a great day to be a Hornet.